and our spiritual man too. But because he came, we can truly say thank you today. So we welcome you to this Palm Sunday celebration today. I can just imagine all those standing there when Jesus came in riding on the donkey. And they were giving him all the praise, giving him all the glory. Saying, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Blessed be the one that cometh in the name of the Lord. They said it all. Hail to the King. They were bowing. They were waving. Having a good time. But a few days later. Say a few days later. Those same people that said, Hosanna to the King. Opened their same mouth and said, crucify crucify him so that shows you how people can change up on you i've seen him through covid how people can change up on you but you know what you got to stay focused and the lord said i love them anyhow they don't know what they're doing but i love them anyhow so you got to be thankful that god love you anyhow even during this time we love everybody say anyhow <laughs> God is a good God. He deserves our praise today. So when you leave here today, the praise doesn't stop here. Your praise is every day, every minute, every second. You wake up. That's a praise in your mouth that you give God the praise. So one more time, I want to know when that ground church to put those hands together and just praise our Lord. Praise our Lord. Because, hey, the rocks are never cry out for us. We are praise our Lord because he's a good God. Hallelujah today. Our scripture will be coming from Minister, Sh Minister Hardy. He's going to do our no Old Testament scripture. Followed with our new scripture, New Testament scripture with Sister Arlene Hardy. Y'all pray for Minister Hester. You know all these tornadoes going on and different things. And they called him out last night to go where all of this Things are going on with the tornadoes. So Sister Hester is still here. And I looked around the corner, Pastor, and I saw Sister Hester up here with us. To God be the glory. Let's give God a hand for continuing to heal and deliver. Amen. Amen. Okay, Minister Hardy. We'll be reading from Zechariah chapter 9, verse 5, verse 5 through 9. Verse 5, and it reads, Ashkelon shall see it and fear. Giza also shall see it and be, and be very sorrowful. And Ekron, for, for her expectation, shall be ashamed. And the king shall, shall perish from Gaza. And Ashkelon shall not be inhabited. And I will take away her blood, I should take away his blood out of his mouth and his abominations from between his teeth. But he that remains, even he, shall he for our God, and he shall be as a governor in Judea, in Judah, and Akron as as a Jebusite. And now all together, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. <clears throat> heavens slowly to ride upon. Hallelujah. Thank God for the reading of his word. Amen. Good morning. I'll be reading Luke chapter 19, verses 30 through 40. Saying, Go ye 
into the village over against you, and the which at your entering ye shall find a colt, and whereupon ye never, whereupon yet never man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And they that were sent went their way and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were loosing the coat, the woman thereof said unto them, Why would you need a coat? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. And, and they, they brought, brought him to Jesus, Jesus and they cast their garments upon the coat, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And forty all together. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning to those that are online. We thank you for joining us for this Palm Sunday celebration. There are no birthdays on this week coming up. But we do have something to share with you. There is a special birthday that will be in this house on Easter Resurrection Sunday. And everybody should know by now, Pastor's birthday will be on next Sunday. The Pulpit Aid Board is asking that all of the members will give a special love offering to Pastor for his birthday. So we appreciate if you would adhere to that. I think he's a very good man. What do y'all think? So at the back of the church, there are some love offering envelopes that will be there today and for on next week. And we do love you, Pastor. We thank you. Uh, Medicare is here on next week. I've been walking around the house with Pastor. He's just been having a good time talking about his Medicare. And I just joined in with him because I'm, I'm not there yet. But I'm almost there. We're right close together. But we truly thank God for each of you. I want you to come back and celebrate with him on next Sunday, Lord's willing, for his birthday. For all of those that are planning to go to the Hyatt Grand Cypress Resort on June 9th through the 11th, please remember your deposit for your room is due today. The contract is sitting in my computer waiting for you. So we'll know how many room, uh, rooms that we will need. So if you would like to pay the entire amount of the $204, you can do that. But we're taking the $25 a day to secure the room. The Finance Committee will be having a running total for your room. Um, they will keep up with it for you. And just remember every now and then to make sure you uh, place something on your room. And we will give you the date that it will definitely all monies would have to be in. The choir will be, will be rehearsing after service today. And also, Pastor and I would like to meet with the, the possible cruise committee that was formed after the um, church conference. And because of the choir meeting in here, um, the cruise committee will meet on the patio next door. So all of those that are part of that cruise committee, please stay and be able to be a part of that. Also, the ushers have some new shirts that have come in. They are here, so please see Brother Ricky Reeves and Sister Valerie Gibbons uh, be able to get your shirts. Even if it's not today, on next Sunday, you'll be able to do that. The singles ministry will meet on April 16th. That's the third Sunday after service, so all singles are asked to attend the meeting. The widows ministry will meet on the fifth Sunday, April 30th after service. All of the widows of the church, we think we have some wonderful ideas that will be able to help you uh, during this time in your life. So we're so thankful for Dr. Thomas taking over that widows ministry. She shared a lot of things with us. So please stay on the fifth Sunday, all of those that are um, widows. We also have a report card that was sent in, and this is from proud grandparents. I thought you were on a plane today. <laughs> yes, okay. Um, from Sister uh, Noel Marshall. 
Noel has all A's and B's and outstanding on her report card. So let's give her a hand. I don't see her this morning, but uh, grandparents will definitely let her know that the committee is working on revising some of those things with the report cards, but they're going to get it back with her. Uh, the committee wants also to be able to have everybody, young people, even if you have a good report card, you need to come to church. So they're working on some of those things of how to be able to revise those things to make sure children will also attend church. We should uh, teach them the right way because they should be in church also. So we thank you for that. And if you notice up here, in here I have some special things in here. In here, I want you to see this container as souls of people. Inside here, I have souls of people. I have people that the harvest is plenteous and the laborers are few. Before COVID, we always had on the back table back there, cards, seeds that you'll be able to sow when you meet someone. Because if you invite them to church, that you can't get all the information in there to them, where it is, how to get there, what time we meet and all of that. So everything is located on these cards. So on the back table, you're gonna see these again. And as pastor taught in the um, church conference on last week, sheep begat sheep. So I want you to just pray about it and ask God that God will place in your heart people during the week when you leave this place that you'll be able to minister to and sow a seed. You don't have to preach a sermon to them at that time. Just give them a card and invite them to come to church. Like I said, these are precious souls of people. So we thank God. People need to get saved now. As you missed in perfecting class, if you were not here, we're in the ripe season for our Lord and Savior to come back to receive us. So remember, I think everybody would like their friends and their family members to be saved. Cause once that door closes, once people die and they leave this earth and they have not accepted Jesus Christ in hell, they will open up their eyes. So I think we should see it as a different way. Why are we here? We're here to reach people and here to win souls for Jesus Christ. Sister Gibbons, I see your husband just walked in. He called us and he shared, he said, try to get Sister Gibbons to be there Sunday, but I had already talked to her this week. And so I didn't need to give the call, but he said, I'm gonna surprise her and come to church. So Brother Gibbons, let's give him a hand for coming from Georgia. That was an on time, Sister Summer. That was an on time thing right there. She did not know. But we thank you for joining us on this Palm Sunday. Now, Sister Gibbons, your husband is here. So Brother Gibbons, will you walk your wife up to the front so y'all can sit together? All right. God is good. Let's give Pastor a hand as he comes forth. Give my hand, amen. Hallelujah. You know, Brother Gibbons, good to see you, sir. Yeah, I looked around for you. I said, mind getting me. I didn't know something might have occurred and you couldn't make it. I'm glad that you're here. Well, I want you to know you have just outdid our top contender. Y'all know who I'm talking about, don't you? I won't call any names. Like Brother Chris. I mean, you guys are making it hard for the rest of us in here, boy. I'm telling you, we're going to have to do something, guys. Amen. God is good. Amen. I pray that you are doing well today. And thank God that here he has allowed us to be a part of another first Sunday in another month. Amen. Someone shout and say, he's a good God. All the time and all the time, God is good. All right. If you have your tithe and offering, we're going to move forward. Before we do so, though, let me share this, this little minor with it, this little story. A few, are you keeping a merry heart? Let's keep smiling and keep enjoying what God is doing. Amen. Keep enjoying. I'm reminding of the story of the mom who got called at work 
got a call at work from the babysitter saying that her daughter was sick. So she stopped by the pharmacy to pick up some medicine. She actually locked her keys up in the car and she didn't know what to do. Someone yelled at her, said, find a clothes hanger. And she didn't have a clothes hanger. So she prayed, she said, Lord, send me someone that can help me get in this car. Send me some help, Lord. About 10 minutes later, this motorcycle rider with a long beard and tattoos all over pulled up and saw this woman just kind of distressed. We said, ma'am, he said, do you need some help? She said, yes, sir, I need some help. And she was a little leery of him because he had tattoos and all this stuff, motorcycle, like, like some gangster or something. So he got there to the car and within five minutes, the car was open. And she said, oh Lord, thank you. Thank you for sending such a good man. And, and he looked at the woman, he said, he said ma'am, he says, I'm not, I'm not a good man. I just got out of prison for car theft. And then she said, Lord, thank you. Not only did you send a good man, but you sent a professional. <laughs> Let's raise our offerings and move forward, amen. Put your hands together again and give God some praise. Have your way, Lord. You've been too good to us for us to sit up here and not praise you. You've been too good to us for us not to say thank you, Lord. You've been too good to us. <laughs> oh, you've been too good, too good, too good for us not to say we love you, Lord. We love you. And we praise you. God is good, amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for your presence in this house today. I want to thank the Lord for co-laborer in Christ, my wife, companion. Thank you, sugar. Love you. Appreciate you. Amen. <laughs> Sister Hester, Minister Hester, in absence, we thank God for you. Minister Hardy, Sister Arlene, amen. God bless you. Minister Shurvington, Sister Shurvington, God bless you. And coming on board this month, Minister Gaynor, amen. <laughs> Sister Gaynor, amen. Oh, I think he tried to dress like me today a little bit, didn't he? <laughs> God is good, amen. Family, let me tell you something. If God be on our side, people might as well get out the way and leave us alone. That's all I'm saying. Amen. If, if, if God be with us, church, you, you might as well just get on board and let other people just get out the way because, hey, you, you, go, you get run over. If it be of God, amen. And God is with us. He comes to be with us. His presence comes with us. You know, right here in our little, in our growing, as my sister, sister always tell me, church, amen. So we are grateful. Thank the Lord for the ushers. Ushers looking good. They, they, they done got some shirts, I heard. And uh, so you're going to see them all dressed a little different a little bit. So God bless them. Amen. I, and I see we have an, our, our, a fill-in camera girl, another girl. Amen. It's Sister Wells, give her a hand. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. A little bit of concrete at a time. Amen. We got to get some things together. A little bit of concrete. We got the office at back there and people working back there. We want to do a little bit at a time. But, you, you know, you have to be faithful. Amen. Uh, 40-some years of being in the ministry. My Lord, th th those are a lot of weekends. Amen. But I don't, I don't regret anything. Most people live their life, go where they want to go. Y'all do that, don't you? Amen. If you don't make it by, back by Sunday, uh-oh. Pastor has to be here, amen. I got to be here, but but you know, once we pour that concrete, get some stuff settled. Hey, you you you're gonna hear my theme song on the road again. <laughs> amen. Why you say that, Pastor? Because I have a life too. Amen. amen. My wife has what? She has a life too. Amen. So don't mistake me for Willie Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> but God is good, and I want us to enjoy everything that God is doing for us. Don't let nobody, like I said, we ain't going to let nobody rain on our party in the ground. 
And I'm pastor, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, if you help me, I'm going to get out your way a little bit. This is Palm Sunday. I'm going to preach. It. And we have communion. So we're going to, if you give me just a few minutes, I'm going to try to get out your way. Let me call your attention to Luke chapter 19, verse 35. I'm also grateful for my son and little Freddie back there at their post. Say amen. <laughs> Big Freddie, that's right. Luke 19.35, and they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the coat, and they set Jesus thereupon. Amen. Now, I want to go back a little bit, and I'll go back later. And he went, and they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitudes of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and, and earth and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitudes said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. And go back with me to Luke 19, chapter 19, verse 30, because I want to kind of center a gist of the, of the message around these particular scriptures. Luke 19, verse 30 says, saying, go ye into the village over against you, and the which that at your entering ye shall find a coat tied, whereupon yet never man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And if any man asks you, why do ye loose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, because the Lord has need of him. Ye will find a coat tied. Whereupon a never of man has sat, loose him, and bring him to hither. I want you to pray for me from this subject, tied up potential. Say that with Pastor, tied up, tied up potential. Now, when you think about potential, we all have it. Potential speaks of what could be if given a chance. Amen? That's why, you know, you, you just you look at life and situation, but it speaks of what could be if given a chance. That's why I think every living child ought to have a chance. Amen. Even if he's going to mess up, let him be born. Can you say amen? amen? I won't mess with that anymore. Potential, if given an opportunity, it would show its possibilities. Every time I see a squirrel eating, a, and I see a lot of them around here, they jump on the house, and they run across the roof, and they jump to another limb. And I said, you better be glad I'm saved. Because you would be in trouble, fellow, waking me up in the morning. <laughs> yeah. but, it, but I'm surprised when I see a squirrel sitting where I'm eating an acorn for a snack, not realizing the potential he's holding in his hands. Amen. That potential that you're holding, Mr. Squirrel, could feed you for a lifetime. Amen. Amen. There's nothing more stressful in life or frustrating or aggravating than to have tied up potential. I always felt like that. I always felt like a pastor who, who I just always felt that I'm, I'm, there's supposed to be more. I'm supposed to be doing more, I'm supposed to be accomplishing more and so forth. But then God so lets me know that my thing doesn't have to be a big thing, just has to be my thing. Amen. And I said, Lord, I can handle that. I can accept it. And the pastor shared that with you. But, 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 but if you want to be frustrated is, 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 is to, to, to have potential tied up on the inside. Of you. It, 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 it's like a singer who he, he can burn. He can show burn, but it's only in the shower. Burning boy, I mean, pulling the towel off the wall. Or like a dancer who knows how to dance, but he can only do it in his living room. Tied up potential. And I want you to look with me for a moment through the eyes of a coat. I want to tell Palm Sunday just a little bit different this time. I want to tell it through the eyes of an animal. I want you to kind of use your imagination and see that this animal was tied up with potential. Amen? Now think about this. This coat sitting there eating hay on a, just a normal day, all of his life he's been going through the same routine. Matter of fact, he's at the entrance of the gate of the city, basically, at the very entrance. He's been tied and never have a man sat upon this coat. He's right at the spot to see people going and coming, other coats, other of his uh, uh, 
comrades carrying people and cargo and stuff, but he's tied, never had been written on. So he's, he, he, he's in the right spot, right at the entrance of the city, of the village, to see all that others are going on and what's happening. Don't you get to, sometimes, you, if you be honest, sometimes you do look at other people. Can you say amen? So sometimes you look at other people, they don't even come to church. Look like they're doing better than you. Can you say amen? And I can imagine this coat had a plenty to, 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 to simply be concerned about. Lord, look at them. Why is that little boy riding on the back of that animal and no one's on my back? So all these years, he's a grown donkey now, but yet he has never had anyone ride him or show interest in him. And don't you know but that he did not know that in another village, there was a man by the name of Jesus that was having a conversation about him. That's what I love about being a child of God. God doesn't always make you privy or uh, gives you insight on the fact that he is talking about you. Hit your neighbor a little bit and say, God is talking about you. This coat sitting there with a mouthful of hay, just chewing away, not knowing that Jesus is talking to, about him to some other disciples. He said, I want you to go to the village. And when you get there at the entrance of the gate, you're going to find a coat tied. He has no idea that Jesus is discussing it. And he has no idea that what God is about to say about him is going to change his life. Amen. And the question that we have to ask ourselves is this. What is God saying about you? Oh, y'all better help, Pastor. What is God saying about you? What, what, what is he saying about you that you are not even aware of? You, have not, you don't even have the, 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 the foggiest clue that God is talking about you. Amen. He is discussing you. Don't you remember? He had this conversation about Job. Job was not aware. God was talking to the devil, and he was bragging on his servants, Job. He said, have you seen my man, Job? Can you say amen? Wouldn't it be wonderful that God looks at us and tells us and looks at others who talk with him because it, Satan had interest. He could go back and forth with the sons of God. Wouldn't it be nice that God says, have you seen my girl, Sally? Wouldn't it be nice that when God talks to anybody about you, that he brags on you? He said, my boy, that's my boy. That's my boy right there. That boy crazy. If I ask him to do something, he'll do it. If I ask him to give something, he'll give it. That boy right there, that boy right there, something else. Wouldn't it be something that God would be just proud of us? Amen. And just like he is, God loves that. It, he loves to talk about us. He loves to pray. When, when, when he's pleased, it's like, like when, when, when Jesus was baptized, the Bible said a dove came down. The Holy Spirit, like a dove, rested upon him. And God spoke audibly, saying, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm what? I'm well pleased on him. What is God saying about you? What is God? Does God say, you know what? I pulled that joker out one time before he went right back to the same thing. What is God saying about you? I told that joker to stop watching that video, but he's still watching that video. Come on. I told that joker not to go back to that website. I told him not to go back to that website. He's still at that website. Oh, what is God saying about you? Could he be saying something positive about you, or could God be slightly disappointed in you? Y'all better help me. Can you say amen? amen? Now, you got to understand something. Jesus said, when you get there to the entrance of the gate, you're going to see a coat tied. Now, this is, he, no one had ever sat on this coat. And you let me, he might be easy to recognize because you have to break a horse or an animal. Amen. And you don't know what that means, do you? You know what that means? When you, when you get on one, amen, you better not be the first one to get on one. Because he's not accustomed to that. He's going to do what? He's going to buck, try to throw you off. So, but, but, but for some reason, this one, this one didn't display any of that. Jesus said, listen. Don't worry, if you run into resistance or any opposition, if anybody asks you, man, what are you doing, man? What you doing? That ain't your coat. What you doing? Jesus said, tell them this statement, what that? Tell them that the Lord have need of him. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, the Lord needs you. Here you are playing church and stuff. You, you're not, not doing what you're supposed to do. God needs you. And that's an awesome thought to have in mind. God, the creator of the world. God, the creator of the universe, needs me? Little old me? What can I do? You have a purpose and a destiny to accomplish while you are here. 
some, you see, some of you don't even realize that God has blessed you so that you can be a blessing. Amen. God has used some of y'all to, to do what you're doing right now. Amen. So, so don't, don't, don't think that God can't use you. He's using you when you are obedient. It's something to think about the fact. What a chilling thought to think about the fact that the God of the universe, oh, the God that created everything, God who spoke light into existence, God who said, let there be, and everything came into existence. What a powerful thought to think that he needs me. Amen. That's a good thought. Amen. Now think about the coat for a moment. For years, and watching other coats go and come in the entrance of the gate, for years the devil had an opportunity to lie to him. You see, the battle is up here. Come on, you say amen, somebody. That's the battlefield is up here. Now, can you imagine year after year that coat watching other coats with, with, with cargo and people riding on the back? Yeah, what's wrong with me? Why won't nobody buy me? Why won't nobody purchase me? Why won't nobody use me? Can you imagine the thoughts that the enemy told this coat, this junkie? And I won't use the third description. Amen. <laughs> Y'all pray for Pastor. Say pray for Pastor. But can you imagine what he whispered to him? He whispered this day after day, week after week, month after month. Ain't nobody want you. Nobody wants you. If they, if, get, if they wanted you, they'd pick you by now. There ain't nobody. Look at that. Look at that. Look around. Look at, look at that. See that? See, there's another coat coming in. And that little boy just smiling, riding on that coat. Look at that. There's another one going out. That, that's the old lady on that one. He said, but nobody has ever asked for you. You ain't worth nothing. You ain't nothing. And, and you ain't careful. The Bible says you got to pull down every thought. Come on now. Amen. You got to watch it. You got to watch it. You got to watch it. It's up here. The battle is up here. And I can imagine that joker, that, that joker finally allowed that Satan to whisper negativity to him for so long that he's painting a picture, a canvas in his mind of nothing but negativity. Amen. And here he's thinking, here I am with all this potential. I'm strong on my strong coat. I'm a strong coat. All this potential and nobody using me to carry nothing. And can you imagine that can make you depressed after a while. It can cause you to think neg negatively of yourself. But understand something. He was discouraged. He was depressed. And I bet you he was despondent. Because what he thought was simply being what? Looked over. And what he thought was simply being uh, not appreciated. He didn't realize that God had something else in mind. Can I preach this thing as I feel it? You see, sometimes we don't know the ways of God. We don't know how God moves. We don't know how God thinks. The Bible says his thoughts are not our thoughts. The Bible says his ways are not what? His ways are not our ways. You, 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 you can't figure out God. You see, here, here, here God will let you go through something. But you think it's for one reason, it's for something totally different. Amen. Totally, say, somebody shout, say, totally different. So here this coat is going through something, man. This is negative, man. Ain't nobody using me, Pastor. I'm tied up potential here. And didn't even realize it wasn't because he was useless. It wasn't because he, he was no good or, or nobody wanted him. It was because of another word. He had been put on reserve. Oh, I can stop right there. Can I preach this thing a little bit? Somebody say, put on reserve. What do you mean put on reserve? When you reserve something. Oh, hallelujah. I know sometimes it's frustrating, but sometimes, you know, if there's going to be a big crowd, sometimes you can have a funeral or something. There'll be a big crowd, and you just come in, you, you be coming, you running late, you're already late, you know. You come in there, and you just want to find a quick seat. And when you go up to a, 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 a seat, you say, that seat open, you come out to the front, you see this little piece of paper. It, and a little piece of paper, and it has just one word. Reserve. Someone shout reserve. reserve. That means, uh-uh. Oh, can I preach this thing like a feeling? This donkey, this colt did not know that it wasn't that God was overlooking you. It wasn't that nobody didn't want you. God had put you on reserve. 
Help me, Holy Ghost. Somebody shout reserve. Look at somebody around you and say, don't be discouraged. You've been put on. Oh, you better watch them shoulders. When them shoulders start going, you, you know something's stirring. Can you say amen? Someone say, I'm on reserve. Nobody can sit there but a special individual. He said, you mean to tell me all these years I thought I had been left out? I thought that I wasn't wanted. I thought that I wouldn't reach my full potential. You mean to tell me God put me through this just to put me on, just to put me on reserve? Can you say amen? And this is what you, I want you to understand. You know, you have to realize something, church. You know, you got to realize that that reserve thing is powerful with God. If someone could have whispered at this donkey early, and told him, man, you're going to, your life is going to be kind of rough at the beginning. Yeah, man, you're going to go through your teenage years and you're going to be an, an, an older donkey, but, but you, you ain't going to have the same experiences that others. That's what pastor wants you to realize. Is that some of us, you're messing up. You're messing up God's plan because you're trying to conform. Some of us shall say, don't conform. You see, I know I'm a different preacher. I know I'm a different man of God. And, and, and the worst thing I can do is try to be somebody other than who I am. Can someone shout glory in this house? You see, where we mess up is that we don't realize that God has put a sticker on us. And the sticker says, reserve. And where you mess up and where you mess up the plan is that you override the uh-uh. Right. Okay. I've got to go. i got to go home. <laughs> say, say, uh-uh. uh-uh. Y'all ain't saying it like I feel it. <laughs> That's where you mess up. God has a wonderful plan for you. God has a wonderful future for you. God has a path already laid out for you. God's trying to get you to stop looking at certain things. God, God is trying to get you to stop hanging around certain people. And every time God tries to do it, you tell him, uh-uh. You tell him, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Help me say it, church. Say, uh-uh. Say, the devil is a liar. That's what's stopping you from reaching your full potential. I'm telling you, God has put a reservation sign on you. You and I, we are reserved. What do you mean reserved, Pat? Dunkin said, they, Dun, Dunkin said, what do y'all mean? Dunkin said, Dun, have you heard? Jesus has called for you. What? Who? Jesus, yeah. Jesus has sent for you. Yeah. I, I want to call him Waldo. You ever seen them little cartoons, Waldo, you have to find him? Finding what? What is it called? Finding what? Can you hear him talking about child? Please. Have you heard what happened to Waldo? You know what happened to Waldo? Well, all these years, nobody picked Waldo. All these years, nobody rode on Waldo. But did you hear who picked him? Did you hear who, who came and chose him? Nobody, do you not know that God has reserved him so Jesus will sit on a brand new spanking? Y'all better preach this thing. Waldo minister. Amen. Can you understand that? So don't you understand something? And I speak this for the family of the church also. Could it be? That God is saving us for a grand. Could it be, AGC, that God is saving us for a grand finale? 
Y'all better help, Pastor. Isn't he a good God? Don't be discouraged. Don't be depressed. Looks like you ain't reaching your full potential, like you ain't doing everything that God wants you to do. Baby, don't worry. God is saving you. He's saving pastor. And I believe he's saving our church for a grand finale. Put your hands together and give God some praise. Is that all right? I want to get you out by 12. But it's a little bit after 12 already. But God is good, amen. Isn't God good? Oh, stand to your feet, family. You help Pastor keep going here. Oh, Lord. He's a good God. Little did that cope know that his name would be written in the B.I. BLE, his experience with God would be written. 2,000 years plus later did he realize that we would still be talking about what he did. He carried the Savior. Amen. Oh, Waldo. Waldo. Waldo carried the Savior. Isn't God good? Now, every Palm Sunday we preach about this. He even had a chance to overhear some people who didn't even like the, like the fussing and the going on. Say, don't take all that. Make your disciples hush. Just softly. Give me some volume. I want you to understand something. Give me some volume back there. We just, we just, we just, every half we have to. Help pastor say thank you, Lord. God, I'm on reserve. I've been put on reserve. I'm not forgotten. He ain't forgotten about me. He wants me to know that I have a temporary sign that says reserve. Amen. And there's some stuff that he's been telling me all of my life, and he's still trying to tell me. Why don't you obey him? He's going, uh-uh. Don't uh-uh now, uh-uh. And sometimes you can, you can see that the level of uh-uh can show levels of frustration. You can have an uh-uh. That's, a, that's low. But you can go, uh-uh. That's a high one. Can't you say amen? That's all. You ought to get ready for a slap coming next. But it's the uh-uhs that's keeping some of you guys from walking into what God has for you and walking in the fullness of what he's doing. Can you say amen? Tied up potential. When you gonna lose? When we gonna see the real you? You can't be like everybody else. And listen to this, if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, we pray that you get to know him. This is Pastor Reeves. Pray this prayer with me and ask God to come into your heart. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I ask you to come into my heart, cleanse me of all my sins, forgive me of all unrighteousness, be my Lord and Savior. Right now, Father, right now, Father, I receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. And I ask also that you fill me with the precious Holy Spirit. Fill me with the precious Holy Spirit and allow me to walk in the fullness of my calling that you have for me. We thank you, Father, for those who prayed that prayer. We believe that they're saved, and we give you glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Isn't God good? Somebody shout, say, I'm reserved. Say it like it means, say, I'm reserved. And I'm going to tell the devil from this day forward, when he tries to get me to realize or think any other thing different, tell the devil, say, put the hand up, say, uh-uh. You may be seated as we get ready for communion. Amen. God bless you.
let us repeat with Minister Harley the confession. Hallelujah. Almighty God, we repent of our sins that we have committed against you. We do repent and are sorry for committing, for committing these sins. Have mercy upon us and forgive us. Help us from this day forward to live a holy and righteous life pleasing to you. Consecration prayer. Almighty God, thank you for your only son, Jesus Christ, who suffered death on the cross for the redemption of our sins. We come today to remember your precious death and your coming again to receive us. We receive this bread and wine with thankful hearts as we remember your suffering and your death. This bread which symbolizes your broken body. Lord, we eat it with thankfulness. The cup of the wine which symbolizes your blood that was shed for us. We drink it in remembrance of thee. And often we take of this bread and drink of this wine. We do remember your death until you come again. Let God people say amen. 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 All right, family, in the same night that he was betrayed, he took the bread and he break before them saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake. Likewise, after supper, hallelujah, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, gave to them saying, this is the blood of the New Testament was shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often you do so in remembrance of me. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout glory to, glory to God. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let us repeat the Lord's Prayer. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Say forever. Say it again. Say forever. Amen. Amen. Isn't God good, family? Isn't God good? Now, just a reminder. The choir will be rehearsing inside. Those who are part of the of the cruise committee will meet on the patio next door at the, at the daycare. So I want to say again, thank you to each of you guys. Look, look at the goodness of God, amen, of what we can do. And I believe he's going to use us to show people. He's going to show the world what, what, what we can do as a people when we come together, when we let God be in our midst, and when we stay together. Can you say amen? He's going to show them what we can do. So to God be the glory. Praise. Again, we love you, Pastor. Love you. Pray for Pastor. Pray for co-pastor. Keep us in prayer. I want everybody to put their hands together for Sister Will. She's been on the camera back there. God is good. And I know everything when we see it online, it's going to be fine. I know Sister Will, you prayed. Everything's going to be fine. So God be the glory. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. As long as you, you know, make sure you take care of Pastor and his fro. We'll be all right. Amen. Someone, someone shout. Say, God is good. Say, all the time. 
the anointed ground church this is our time god is uh, moving us into an area god is with us church i don't care what they say just remember god is with us he's on our side and all we got to do is hold on to his hand amen we love you we pray god's blessing be upon you enjoy your life enjoy what god has given you and to god be the glory now may the saving grace of our lord and savior jesus christ and the sweet communion of his precious holy spirit may he rest rule and abide now henceforth and from evermore and god's people said amen amen, amen and amen